here is how you get in trouble for speaking about these things online. We're going to be talking about transgendered athletes. You get in trouble if you do what's called misgendering. You misgender someone. So if I have decided, if I am a transgender person and I was a male to female and you say, oh, he over there does that. That's misgendering somebody, and that does get people kicked off of social media. It Twitter is an will ban you. Twitter will ban you. It's an insensitive you. thing to do. We are not going to do that here. Um, you also are not allowed to say anything against, um, you know, whether the what biology of somebody else's claimed biology. But we are going to do a study now, or a story now, where we have to talk about birth gender, and specifically gendered bodies. Um, and I want to talk about this in a rational way and let you know that I do believe that there is such a thing as transgendered, absolutely. I also do believe there is such a thing as gendered binary. And I think that both things can exist in a way that's fair and we're gonna talk about it in a way that's respectful to all people. So here is what the news is, okay? Yeah, here's the news. Here's the news of the morning. The United States is unveiling a new policy for elite transgender swimmers. Now, what this will do is we'll set new criteria for transgender athletes at, in, in elite swimming events. This three-person medical panel will now determine whether prior physical development of the athlete as a male gives transgender swimmers an unfair advantage, the USA Swimming says. They're gonna do testosterone tests. Um, so when a biological male has completed puberty, they have 40% more upper body mass than before puberty, right? Because the natural human male body, the center of gravity is here on the shoulders, right? Uh, uh, that was what puberty does. Yes, look at the guns, right? Puberty gives women our center of gravity here in the hips because we are the birthers. We need it there, right? right? That gives us different biological bodies. So if a biologically born male has gone through puberty, they have the advantage of a larger cardiovascular system and 40% more upper body mass, more fast twitch muscle fiber, more oxygenated blood. It is an advantage when it comes to sports, but not all transgendered people go through puberty because of the advent of puberty blockers. So what if, are puberty blockers? They're medicines that people take. It's a pharmaceutical that it's like they call it a pause button on your puberty it's right? gotta be healthy it's really not it's really not healthy it, at all it's and in fact doctors say it's because puberty not just changes your body for biological reproduction it also matures your brain right. and so when you take chemicals to stop that you are stopping natural development of your brain as well it is not it's not something that should be done lightly i well, don't think it's something that should be done um to kids under a certain age and that is another debate that we will put on the side for now yeah because um, i was going to say there's a group of people that are actually actively you know giving these to children babies yes. so that they can decide what gender they want to be when they're of the the right age which is because right and so the problem with this is that the pharmaceutical companies will gladly take your money to do this to children it renders your children sterile pretty much right away. Um, and it predisposes them to all sorts of cancers and um, endocrine disrupting processes in the body. It's, it's not done easily. And people who do it, who make this transition, take that risk acceptably. They know what they're going through. Most of, uh, up until recently, they've been doing it into their adult lives after their brain has matured enough to assess the risk, right? So, so here we're saying in this swimming story that if a person's body has gone all the way through puberty, they may not be able to swim against, so a, a male specifically, right? Um, actually, this, this policy refers to all transgendered people. But if they've gone through puberty, then they already are biologically different and have either an advantage or a disadvantage when it comes to the sport. And that will have to be assessed, right? They will test their testosterone for 36 weeks. So, so let's say I am a male to female transgendered person, but I took puberty blockers. So I did not actually change the structure of my body yet and have not had those those things happen is it then fair for that child we're going to call them children um okay i guess not right 
because they could be teenagers or, or late teenagers. Is it fair for that person to compete against women? I don't believe so. I mean, if yeah, they yeah. have not gone through puberty. Yeah, I don't think that that matters. I, I don't because you're you're still born. You're born with with the, the bone structure and, and stuff that you have. It, I don't think it's puberty that made me stronger when I was a kid, you know, a little kid. Than, than some of the girls in my class. You know what I mean? It was it was like, we still have those advantages. Uh, uh, well, I don't say advantages, but those differences. So I, Not I don't think that Not to the same that... extreme though. Like no, but if, we, but if you were to advantage. stop it at a certain age, that it is more of an even platform than but I can, But I just can't, I'm never gonna get behind blocking somebody's puberty. I'm never gonna get behind that ever. Because right. that is oh, wrong me, in itself. Me, me either, absolutely. But. So let, let's take it a step beyond that. Let's just say it's already happened, right? Yes. Like it's not like you and I are on the same page on that puberty blockers. Like let's throw medicine at people to like to stop the natural, you know, unveiling of puberty in someone. No. And we know that the, the horrible health repercussions of doing that, right? Yes, but well, I don't think you should. Okay, go ahead. But beyond that. So let's say it's already happened right now. We're having a discussion about this has already happened. Now this person you know, did not develop the upper body strength yes. of a man. And so, but I, so, but I still disagree because if you look at like, look at things like when I was a kid track and stuff, all the boys, we always outran the girls. We played football and the girls, we always outran the girls. So there was still a, a big, a major strength and, and stuff difference between boys and girls. Like before I even got close to puberty. Hmm. Right. And so what you're saying is maybe we're over relying on the estrogen testosterone as the only indicator. Yes. Of gender, and you're abs you would absolutely be right. Um, pull up a book there called "Sexing the Body" by Arlene Fosto Sterling. What she did is um, read through the academic papers from like the 20s, 30s, 40s when gender hormones were discovered, and she realized that the actual function of these things were assigned by basically gender biased. Uh, is it that one, Arlene? Yes, um, that's a different cover than the one that I read. Um, and a lot of what we think about these sex hormones, like testosterone causes men to be this, um, is sort of gendered constructions. What they do is much different than what we think that they do. And all of our bodies have a mixture of both things. So you're but right that we're over relying on the hormones to explain this. The problem with this is that... Um, Let's get back to the story. Okay. Because the story I think is important. The U.S. is unveiling new policy for elite transgender swimmers. So you have a, let's just imagine, you've got a 13, 14 year old girl who loves swimming, right? She watches these swimmers on TV and she's like, I'm gonna be an Olympic athlete when I grow up in the women, I'm gonna compete against other women and win the gold, right, for my country. That's yes. my dream, right? So she trains every day. She swims three, four hours a day. I used to you know, be on the swim team and we'd be there for hours and hours and hours. That's why we were state champions. Um, but we, you know, so you train, you train, you train, you train, right? And then you find out one day like, oh, you know what? Now we're going to have in your, the people you're going to compete against are, they were born men, but they've now, they've now uh, transitioned to a woman. So now they're technically, they're, now they're, 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 they're a Don't. woman. They're a woman, right? Yes. But they were born a biological man, right? They have 40% more uh, cardiovascular. 40% uh, more muscle mass. 40% more muscle mass. Uh, they're, they're breathing. What is it again? The, they have. Uh, you know a, all the dates. They have mass. a 40% bigger or, or a 40% bigger cardiovascular. 40% yes. more muscle mass. A bigger cardiovascular system. In and, fact, the okay, data so now shows. You're gonna, all right. Now you're going to swim against this person and you will lose. You will well, never and the, win. And also like, there's been the records. Line. There have been world records broken that that a woman that the same level will never be able to break. So they've never. actually made it impossible for these women to to achieve something that they may work for their whole entire life. Okay, right. so here's the problem, right? Here's the problem because- That's not enough of a problem? This is, the problem is that we all want so badly to be accepting of transgendered people that we are ignoring a biological fact that disadvantages anyone who's not transgendered and so you know i think the woke left is like well you've had it your way for so long it's been a bi you know <laughs> you've had biology your way for so long we're right. going to take over the biology now but u.s data u.s swimming data shows that the top ranked female athlete in 2021 would have been ranked 536th in male events so women's bodies just literally cannot compete when it comes to speed 
Right. Well, that's like Serena and, Williams. She played a couple of guys and, and they smoked her in tennis and, and they weren't even like... And, well, and they, the, the, that 15 year old soccer team, the guy, a bunch of kids that were 15 year olds played the, yeah. the women's um, Australian professional soccer team and beat them. Right. Yeah. And so now if you if you don't if you're not just blatantly accepting of birth gender people in a new category of athletics, you are considered a bigot. In fact, <laughs> in February 2019, tennis great and proud lesbian Martina Navratilova wrote for the Sunday Times that allowing trans athletes to compete in women's sports was unfair to biological women. She was labeled a transphobe and dropped by her sponsor, <laughs> Athlete Alley. Um, that whatever that company has said, the trans community is under attack and we firmly oppose, stand opposed to any and all people who perpetuate attacks against them, regardless of who they are or how, or their accolades. Now, Martina Navratilova is probably the world's most prominent gay female athlete. And if we can call her anti-LGBT and a bigot for standing up for girls sports then we've jumped the shark right we're not actually thinking about what is fair in athleticism so well, that's like the same it's like you you're, hey let's talking. give women's rights by taking them away right right so now these women who are biological women they train their whole lives to be a, a swimming star they want to they want to compete and they, they want to be top of their game they they can't you know they can't because now the, as a biological man who transitioned to a woman gets plopped into this into into their in their category now and will smoke them absolutely smoke them just if they have finished their puberty yeah i, mean, I don't I even believe that i don't i don't, think I mean, that's, we, I don't know the if there's marker. any data but here's why we we don't know and this is why they shouldn't we should have separate like okay then you've got a man you've got men's swimming you got women swimming. Then why not have uh, transgender swimming? Exactly. Yeah, that was that's what, what I was Purple thinking. Rain in the in the chat says because absolutely transgender people should not be excluded from sports, and they should not have to compete as the gender that they have left behind. I don't think that that's that's great. Fair so then either. let's start a whole new category. Let's start a new, hey we started a women's category. We started a men's category. Let's start a transgender yeah. category. I mean Go they have it. the the people that race that. in wheelchairs. They play basketball in wheelchairs. Like yeah. they create, Wait, they just created their own category. Yeah, exactly. We have people that uh, um, are, you know, are disabled, physically disabled, right? I don't know what the new name is. We change the names every few years, right? Um, and physically disabled. So now, you know, you don't have the use of don't your legs. Don't be like that. No, like... I'm serious. We change the names. I can't keep up with it. Okay. Uh, you know, we, it, when I was growing up, it was you were handicapped, you know, the handicapped parking. Now it's not, now it's not called that anymore. And you can't keep up with the names. Someone, someone somewhere makes a name change and now it's something different. Okay, but I know? don't want to act like, oh, what do we have to say now? All right, like, we're saying what is the most respectful way to be inclusive because according to this policy there probably are male to female transgendered women who now feel like oh well i can't compete with the other women who i identify with as my peers and that also is sad for them they absolutely deserve a place to express everybody loves movement and competition they should have a place too yeah uh, well and i one of the reasons that i've been like following this is Joe Rogan was talking about it. And when he was talking about a, a, a transition that uh, female to male that um, boxed uh, women in, in the uh, MMA, MMA. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. literally crushed a girl's skull, like literally broke her eye socket and crushed it in with a punch mm -hmm. because they're so much more stronger. And he's like, this is not right. Yeah, the, the book that I finished two weeks ago called Irreversible Damage about the transgender craze seducing our daughters. Specifically, she says that there is a new contingency of girls who are identifying as transgender late in their teenage years. When true transgendered, one of my best friends is one that I, I grew up with. Um, she lived with us for a long time. Um, uh, we grew up in a in a religion where we had to wear dresses. It was not an option. And it was really uncomfortable for her to wear dress. And we were always like, come on, just wear the dress. You know, we got to go to church. We had to, we did not have a choice. It wasn't a church where you could wear pants as a female. And she was so uncomfortable. She was not, she knew her whole life. Transgendered comes out very young between the ages of two and four. And Absolutely, she knew then. But this now is late teenage girls identifying as trans and them being able to uh, change their pronouns at school without their parents knowing. In fact, the school laws um, now 
mandate that, that they don't tell the parents when they change their names or pronouns. They are able to get hormones because of the Affordable Care Act, which allows us to give birth control to young girls. Um, these girls say, oh, this is my preferred type of hormone, not birth control, but uh, gender t changing hormones, and they can get it without parents' tr uh, parents' permission. And so she tells there a story. There have been cases where kids have been taken away from parents for not Yes, with this yeah, thing. and you can delicense somebody like a therapist, which is it, which is upsetting in and of itself because the current professional standard for treating transgender or people, not transgender, people with gender dysphoria is that you believe them right out of the gate. So if someone who is maybe 12 or 13 or later in their teens says, I think I'm transgender, but they don't fit the other, the normal sort of profile of a transgender person, the... Therapists are now just supposed to believe them. Just you treat them like they're, if they say that they're a different gender, you believe them. You don't help them accept their bodies. You don't question it. Nothing. And that's I not I kind of wish how... this existed when I was a kid because there was a certain time that I actually believed I was Batman. Okay. <laughs> that maybe is a little bit of... that. We're minimizing uh, what these. Hold on, I want to take a moment here because I know you. You want unless you, I, I can leave, but if you want, I want. I want to finish the point because I think it's important to point out that if we allow these children very young to say what they are, and we treat them towards this, and we give them pharmaceuticals to make this change permanent and therefore sterile, but there is no support for maybe supporting someone that's going through puberty and feels uncomfortable in their body. Or for instance, if a girl were to come in and say, I'm anorexic, I think I'm really fat, you do not believe her and say, yeah, you're fat, let's work on starving you and completely changing your body, right? You question, what is it that's going on behind? Maybe they are transgender, maybe they're not. They definitely have gender dysphoria, but is pharmaceuticals and leaving their parents out of the decision the actual answer? And so to go back around to the point that you were making about um, someone getting hurt in sports, there was a girl in this book that wanted to train as a male ballerina. Having trained her whole life as a female ballerina, she got accepted to a ballet school and was trying to train for males and she was trying to hold female ballerinas up in their routines and was hurting people because she could not do what the male ballerinas do and like lift them up twirl around right okay now you can take it my, well i just well, want to let me so, let me i just want to say something really quick about my point about batman so the reason i say that is because we are we don't let kids decide like if a kid is like four years old and they're like you know i really feel like i want to be married it's like no you're not going to get married you're four years old I think that these decisions are life altering decisions that they should not be able to make until they are at an age of consent, which I would argue would be 18 to 21 years old. They don't, mm -hmm. they can't even drive a car until they're 16. They can't do certain things. If they came and said, Hey, I'm going to, I want to have a boyfriend and I, and I think I'm ready to have sex. Well, no, you're not ready to have sex. Well, you're letting me choose my gender. Like what decisions do you allow them to make and not allow them to make as children? And I think that having that conversation with them also is a form of indoctrination because you're making them think. And if they watch TikTok and everything, it's become the cool thing to do. And so yes, it's the, right. when I say yes. becoming Social Batman, it's because I thought Batman cause, was cool. Yes. Yeah. And it's like so, now there's thousands of, of uh, um, pronouns and stuff if you watch TikTok and it's just getting out of hand. And I just don't think that they should be allowed to make these life altering decisions at that young of an age, period. So put this up on the screen, David, on our in our chat. So Snarky for Life says, just look up Just Jazz on YouTube. This boy was conditioned by his mother to think he was a girl. She changed him on the outside to look like a girl. When this child was 14, he went for surgery. Okay. Then at 16, Snarky for Life says, at 16, he changed his mind and wanted to reverse the surgery, but that cannot be undone. No, even girl to female to male um uh hormones are they like they deepen the voice and it never comes back they start to widen the jaw and the hips and, and they um actually they shrink the hips which most girls actually like right away right because when you hit puberty and your hips start to widen you're like what the heck is this um and yeah, it, it, uh, it's not really just as reversible. So current, you know, woke thinking is like, just pause that puberty and then you'll see later. But data shows that 100% of children who pause their puberty go on to transition their gender because they can't really go back. They can't then proceed with 
puberty as normal cause. Um, and, you know, biologists now are saying and doctors are saying that is not a neutral act to just push a pause button. It's not actually. I want to find that quote. You go ahead and talk. Schwing in our chat says, so you can just, you can change your entire body's chemistry as a kid, but still get arrested for drinking a beer before you're 21. Yeah. yeah. You that's that's the thing. You, you can go to war. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you can go defend your country. You, you can go to invade Ukraine, right, at 18 years old, but you can't have a beer until you're 21. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's literally the same. Like if we are going to give kids that choice, then why can't we just let them go? This is like, hey, go, go get married. Go find a boyfriend. Go. Go have sex. Go do whatever. You're yeah. And so th specifically, this is a quote from a psychotherapist. He was like, the drugs, the hormone blockers, they say it's a neutral act, but what are they talking about? You're going to powerfully interfere with a person's biological development. He's like, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. Some people will make this. In fact, the transgendered people that did transition their genders in the book did so very late in life. And after a lot of support and supportive therapy and understanding the risks that they were taking to, to do so. Right. And so a, a young child, if you say to them, um, for instance, uh, you know, if you had said to me when I was a teenager, I did go through a, a time when I wanted to have a breast reduction surgery because I thought it would just be easier to like run and jump and play. Um, and if I had done and if you had said to me, well, what if you want to nurse three babies? You know, I'd say, I'm not going to have babies. Who cares? Right. I was just at an age where I wanted what I wanted because of my own body politic. And. If my parents had allowed me to do that, I would not then have been able to nurse my babies for 45 months, I will say, um, cumulative, not each. And I would not have been able to make a decision that I could live with for the rest of my life because I was a child who just wanted to not suffer the body dysmorphia, right? So how much of this is, is changing someone's biology just too fast and too irreversible? Um, so I didn't mean to go this far into the discussion because we were talking about sports, but nevertheless, we did. 